Happy almost Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and it's time for some Gumplin news. 2019 is turning out to be a really good year for Master Grades. In the first couple months of the year alone, we've already got Master Grade Dynamas and the Narrative Sinanti Stein, and it looks like the Master Grade Gundam Age 2 Magnum will soon be joining their ranks. The Age 2 Magnum will be coming out in March alongside the Gundam Dynamis, which is a bit of an odd choice. Seeing as there's a completely open month between the Stein and the Dynamis, it probably would have made sense to release it in February. Especially since that way the Age 2 Magnum wouldn't have to directly compete with what is literally one of the most wanted Master Grades ever. Then again, it is a really nice feeling to finally get two Master Grades in the same month again. Although now that I think back, that usually happens in March anyways. After all, this year we got the Deep Striker and the Banshee Varka in March. And if I remember correctly, in 2017 we got the Providence Gundam, the Gundam Edition Providence Gundam, and the Special Edition RX-78, the Origin version, all in March. So it seems like March is just a big month for Gunpla in general. Back to the topic of the Age 2 Magnum, I really like how this looks. There are some changes to the design. Obviously there's a few extra panel lines added in and it looks like the clear parts are a bit more blue than green, but even with those changes I still really like how it looks. Now I have heard some less than savory things about the Master Grade Age 2, so hopefully the issues that it has aren't too major. From what I can see in these images, it actually looks like they're highlighting certain points in the inner frame. In fact, the standard Age 2's issues might actually not be a problem at all for the Magnum because they're highlighting certain points on the inner frame in some of these images that makes me think they might be doing some modifications to the base frame to fix some of the problems the original had. Not to be outdone by his build diver's buddy, the Dynamez also has a new set of images to share with us. So the first two images here are of the same 3D model that we've already seen of the kit and then after that I've actually got a few to show you of the actual plastic model. So these new 3D renders show off a few new features of the Dynamez we hadn't seen before. Um, one big feature that a lot of these sniping suits sometimes have and sometimes don't that people look for is the ability to actually go down all the way prone on the ground for a proper sniping pose. And it looks like the Dynamez is definitely going to be able to do that. There is a lot of neck articulation on this kit and that's usually the most important factor. If this is how you were planning on displaying your Master Grade Dynamez, it looks like you'll be just fine. Some other smaller features of the Master Grade Dynamez include the opening missile pods in the front skirt. Now we already kind of predicted these were going to be a thing just based off the earlier images, but now we can actually see them opened up. It looks like a pretty fun gimmick, and while I would have liked to have seen the missiles colored in, it's something that you can't really expect to see on a kit like this. That's kind of getting into perfect grade territory. The Master Grade Dynamis will also have a opening thruster gimmick for the thruster pods on the back. Judging by the way these are designed, I suspect it'll be a similar situation to the Master Grade Sinanju, where when you lift up one of these panels, the whole thing spreads open and the middle part slides out. I believe they also did a similar feature with the Master Grade Tolkis, and it's always a really cool effect to see. And here we have an actual in-hand plastic model of the Master Grade Dynamis from the Next Phase project at Gundam Base Tokyo. This kit looks just as good in plastic as it did before. The detail's all there, and there's actually some extra stuff here that I never noticed before, like that little bit of gray trim around the chest vents. I also like how he's got just a little bit of that GN cable material on the stock of his rifle. With this particular test build, it looks like they did a similar thing to what Dengeki Hobby does, where they intentionally leave the nubs kind of ragged looking so you can tell where they are. This kit has awesome nub placement. Even on the forest green parts, which is one of the colors that usually marks up the most when you try to denub it, there's not a lot of visible nubs on this kit and I'm really impressed by that. Every time I see it, it just looks better and better. So even though we won't be getting a retail release Master Grade in February of next year, we will be getting the Master Grade Red Frame Astray Red Dragon. Now, as it's not a retail kit, this is of course a premium Bondi exclusive, which is a little disappointing, but it's still a really cool looking model. In the past, I haven't really been a big fan of the Red Dragon version of the Astray, but now that I look at some more, it is pretty much just the red frame with flight unit with just a bunch of big swords instead of wings and a really cool effect part underneath the V-fin. There's actually a lot to like about this model. What's gotten me most interested in it is that he doesn't only just have all these big cool new swords and stuff, he actually comes with all the parts you need to make a standard red frame. And if you recall back to the first release of the Master Grade red frame, we actually never got a standard red frame at retail. We got a retail release for the red frame Kai, but what you're seeing here is really the closest you can come to making a standard red frame. You don't get the standard backpack, you don't get the shield, and you don't get the rifle. However, the Red Frame Red Dragon comes with all of those parts plus all the new accessories. So you can make this both a standard Red Frame or the Red Dragon. And with how the Red Dragon upgrade works, you actually get most of a flight unit as well. Really the only concern I have about this kit is that it'll turn out like the Red Frame Kai or the XN Riser where it just has a ton of weight issues. But while the swords on this kit are pretty big, they aren't that big, so I think he might be okay. Either way, I'm still gonna try to pick one of these up. 
Oh, and one more thing that really surprised me about the Red Frame Red Dragon is that we didn't get a North American release for it. The last few kits we've gotten North American releases for, the Avalanche Exia, the XN Riser, the Turn Red, the Perfect Grade Red Frame Kai, they all kind of fit the same theme as this kit. It's like kind of a pseudo MSV style upgrade of a really popular lead Gundam. It's got a lot of new tooling and it's a really flashy kind of attention grabbing design. This fits exactly in line with the kind of stuff that Bluefin's already started releasing in the US. So why they didn't do a North American release for this is kind of beyond me. I think it would have worked great and it would have given US fans a chance to just build a regular standard red frame. Dropping down the spectrum to the absolutely underwhelming side of the premium Bandai web shop, we have the Regelgu Unicorn version. This is just that Double Zeta Gundam version Regelgu we got a couple months back but it's kind of a bluish purple now and he's got, what is that, a Giradoga gun? Some kind of Neo Zeon beam rifle. But yeah, this thing's just a super basic recolor of what was already a really goofy looking kit. So we got to see the kits for that new SD Gundam line that they talked about in the live stream. Uh, you know the one, the, what was it, Sengokuden Soketsuden? And I'm not going to talk for a very long time about these because I'm really not that impressed with them. The designs themselves are fine, I guess. They're pretty much the standard SD Sengokuden Gundam fare where they're just really wild samurai versions of classic Gundams, modified to the point where you can't even really tell what they are. But what really disappoints me about these kits is, as far as I can tell, they don't look like they're using the cross silhouette frame. I was really hoping that Cross Silhouette was going to be the future of SD Gundam, and that all kits we'd get from now on, with the exception of ones that were retools of older models, would use the Cross Silhouette body style. Now I might be completely wrong, and maybe these do use Cross Silhouette style construction, but from what I can see in these images, that doesn't seem to be the case. And while I wouldn't have bought these kits anyways, even if they were Cross Silhouette, it is kind of disappointing to see that that won't be the standard from here on out. And for the sake of the SD Gundam fans out there, I'm going to blow through these just really quickly just so you can get an idea of what we got going on. We got the Sunjion Astray, it's kind of a modified gold frame Astray with a bunch of gold and red on it. We got the Cow Cow Wing Gundam, which is kind of a dark and edgy looking Wing Zero Custom. Zhangfei God Gundam is actually one of the cooler looking ones out of the bunch. I kind of like this design. Blue Bay Unicorn Gundam bears almost no resemblance to the actual unicorn with the exception of a little bit of exposed psycho frame. Guan Yu Yun Chang New Gundam actually has a bunch of really cool looking translucent parts and I kind of like how this one looks. The translucent parts are really cool, but the body itself... Uh, I don't know. And finally, the Dongzuo Providence Gundam looks like it's literally made out of lava. Unfortunately, this, and this also goes for all the others, is just a painted prototype, and the final kit is probably not going to look anywhere near this cool. At least not right out of the box. The third and final version of the Gundam narrative is the C-Pack. This version of the Gundam narrative is not so much a weapons upgrade as it is an upgrade for the entire Gundam. The whole thing is covered head to toe in new psycho frame pieces that bear a very strong resemblance to a certain Gundam from a previous Universal Century OVA. And as it turns out, this Naricorn is actually getting a retail release. So what we're looking at right here is pretty much going to be the cheapest way to get a narrative Gundam. Now unfortunately, this isn't the exact version of the narrative that you get with the APAC, and I also don't think that you can just pull all the psycho frame parts off of this and have the APAC style narrative Gundam. I'm pretty sure that's not how this works. It definitely looks like the armor underneath the psycho frame has been retooled to accommodate it, and I kind of doubt that they'll give you all the parts you need to convert it back. Although there might be one or two pieces left on the runners. So you really have to look at this kit as its own thing and not just a way to get a cheaper narrative Gundam. And as its own thing, it looks, well, not even really like its own thing. It just looks like somebody smashed together a unicorn Gundam in a narrative. Personally, I think both designs looked much better on their own. And with how many people there are out there that just flat out dislike the unicorn because of how oversaturated it is, I can't see this version of the narrative gaining at very many fans. However, it is still the cheapest way to get a Gundam narrative, so if you just want a narrative Gundam, not a bad choice. So interesting development regarding the B-Pack. It turns out that the B-Pack is actually not going to be a full kit and it's just going to be an upgrade set. So if you want a narrative Gundam B-Pack, not only are you going to have to buy a P-Bandai kit in the form of the B-Parts upgrade set, but you're also going to have to buy a $50 retail kit, the narrative A-Packs, just to be able to use it. That's kind of a dick move on Bandai's part. I mean, I know they wanted to push sales on the A-Pack to make people buy the big expensive kit, but Come on, it's a P Bandai kit, it's already some special limited thing, just throw in a narrative body with it. A lot of people like myself would have been perfectly willing to get just a narrative Gundam with a B pack instead of that big A pack monstrosity. And now it looks to be the case that if you want to get any version of the standard narrative, you have to get an A pack. 
However, the B-Pack parts look like they're going for around $30 depending on where you get them, so at least they're not too expensive. Also in narrative P-Bandai news, we did get a glimpse of a high-grade DJ narrative version. Now, we don't know anything at all about this other than the fact that it's just the same standard DJ but color swapped with no new weapons or anything. At least it doesn't look like it has any new weapons in these pictures. But we don't have any release information, we don't have a price or anything about it. We just know that it's P-Bandai and it's coming out eventually probably sometime next year. I can't say this is really a surprise, but I am kind of curious to see if they follow this up with a Re100 because I do slightly prefer that version of the DJ just a little bit. So as I've come to just accept at this point, uh, Bandai announced something new right as I was starting to edit this video. So this is the Reborn 100 Gun Blastor. And this is a very simple recolor of the Re100 Gun Easy just with a new backpack. In fact, the old Gun Blastor actually came with the Gun Easy backpack parts, so if you wanted to paint it up, you could just switch them out back here and you'd be good to go. The Re100 Gun Blaster is going to be a P Bandai kit, but I'm kind of okay with that. It's not a huge deviation from the Gun Easy, and to be honest, I've always kind of preferred the Gun Easy anyways. That color separation on the backpack does look really nice though. So it's December, that's a new month, that means new kit, so of course it's box art time. So let's look at the box art for December 2018. Figurized Mechanics Haro comes in an extremely plain white box that has a bit of a grid pattern in the background. And even though I understand they're going for a clean, minimalistic look, it's still kind of bland. If I just saw this on a shelf at a hobby shop and I didn't know what it was, I would be pretty unlikely to pick it up. Fortunately, the high grade build divers kits don't really have that problem since they've all got really vivid, eye-catching box art. Or at least most of them do. The H2 Magnum SV is definitely one of those, as the box art for this looks awesome. It highlights the suit in both modes, as is usually the case with the transforming Gundam, and it just all around looks really neat. The Shining Break is also highlighted in both modes on its box art, which is kind of funny now that I think about it that we're actually getting two transforming high grades within the same month. How often does that happen? The pose is a little generic, but other than that, it's pretty good box art. Mobile Doll Sarah looks sufficiently cute. Not much else I can say about it. DJ's box art looks really cool. Definitely lines up great with the BR Lant and the Gabaldi Beta they did earlier this year. Very similar style. Awesome shot of the Psycho Gundam there in the background. The Perfect Grade 007 Sword G was kind of interesting because I wasn't sure exactly what the box art on this was going to look like. Unlike the other grades, with Perfect Grades you can never really tell what exactly the box is going to look like. Sometimes it's just a close-up of the Gundam's face. Other times you get a full body shot of the kit or maybe just a close-up on the upper body in some kind of action pose. The 007 Swords one of the latter. In fact, if I remember correctly, this is the exact same pose they used on the box art for the Master Grade. Never mind, it is completely different. This pose still does look really familiar though. But anyways, like most of the December kits I'll be talking about in this video, the 007 Sword Perfect Grade is actually already out. And because it's out now, we can actually see exactly what the new tooling on the Seven Sword is. And they did nothing to modify the structure of the kit at all. All they did was shrink down the chest fence a little bit and change the shape of the shoulder slightly. That's it. So most of the double O Gundam that you get with the Seven Sword is exactly the same as the double O Gundam that you get with the double O Riser. But that's enough double O Seven Sword for today. Let's talk Gun Easy because the Gun Easy's box art looks really cool. That seems to kind of be a theme with the Re 100s. They really put their all into the box art for these kits. There's lots of cool vibrant beam effects because that's kind of Victory's thing. There's some really cool mobile suits fighting in the background. I recognize some of these and then there's some others that I don't really recognize. It's really just great box art all around. Full Armor Gundam Unicorn is another one of those big box real grades like the Sazabi, so this is basically coming in a master grade size box. I love the lighting on this box. They made everything super dark so the eyes and psycho frame just pop out of the darkness. It really sets us apart from the other real grades. So even before you build it, this kit's going to be visually dominating your collection. And on the other side of the spectrum we have the SD Cross Silhouette Phoenix. It's pretty small, pretty diminutive. Pretty average for a cross of the wet. And finally, to close out the night, we just got some random miscellaneous little Dengeki Hobby snap build galleries. You know these things. I've talked about them before. So the R Jar Jar is looking pretty cool. This is one of those kits we're getting in January. This is also a kit we've wanted for a long, long, long time. It's been a much, much desired high grade Universal Century kit. So it's really cool to see they're finally getting to it. It always seems like the first two or three months of the year are the ones where we get the most exciting kits. I mean, think about how many big and exciting kits have come out in the first few months of the year. Master Grade Gym Sniper 2, High Grade GM Ground Type, Master Grade Deep Striker, Master Grade Dynamis, High Grade Gustav Carl, High Grade R Jarja. I think I'm sensing a pattern here. Leo Flight Type's still a Leo with a flight pack. 
Um, what can I say about this that I haven't already said? Oh yeah, he's got these cool little machine gun turrets on his shoulders. That's kind of neat. So the real Greg Togis 2's new head looks amazing. The color separation on this thing is spot on. They got the little red tears coming down out of the eyes. The mohawk is both yellow and white, so some great part separation there. Sometimes with PB and I kits, they tend to cheap out a little bit on the new parts, but that definitely doesn't look like it's the case here. So there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Gunplin News. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. If you're new to Channel 2S, subscribe for more fun Gunpla content. And as always, I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.